Hey, how's it going guys? Phil Blazik here. I am the cover artist for a new game we're all very excited about coming out from Axiom RPG Systems. It is Upper Hand Wrestling, a tabletop game, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about it, and I thought who better than to bring in but the brains behind the operation himself, Zach Arrive. Zach, what are you doing? Oh yeah, Macho Man Randy Savage here filling in for Zachariah. I also helped in the game's creation in an advisory capacity, mainly so that that dirty no good Hogan could get his hands on it. Zach, what is are you doing? No Zach here. Only Macho Man Randy Savage, cream of the crop. Always rises to the top, like upper hand, an axiom, RPG system. I did not sign up for this. Upper hand is a fast-paced card system that lets you experience the heart-pounding thrills of being inside the squared circle without taking any bumps yourself. Oh, yeah! It also features an all-play system that allows everyone at the table to not only play a character, but Game Master others as well, so no one is left out. Dig it! You can pick up your copy at Drive Through Games at DriveThruRPG.com. The link is on your screen, but don't click the link as we are too poor for hyperlinks. Oh yeah, yeah. That's great. Oh yeah. Uh, one thing, Zach. Oh, yeah? Macho Man is dead. Oh, no. Actually, uh, during COVID, went ahead and, uh, I, I'd been telling myself for a while that I wanted to get back into Skyrim, and I <laughs> finally did it. Nice. nice. And, uh, I don't know what the absolute fuck happened, but I had to install mods to cheat. What? Like, I, I never had this problem before. I don't know what my issue was. For some reason, every single goddamn town or major area I would go to had a roving band of, like, three mercenaries that would show up to, quote, teach me a lesson. I don't know what. I must have stole something at some <laughs> point and, like, somebody put a hit out on me. But, Compared to what level I was and these dudes, they would wreck my absolute shit. And I had to cheat to be able to actually enjoy the game. And now I'm just ridiculously overpowered. What did you do to bring those mercenaries I, I don't know. in you? <laughs> I don't know, man. That's hysterical. I, I ended up downloading a cheat ring that gives oh, nice. me like a billion HP and strength. Everything I hit, I... I hit just dies immediately dragons dudes everything i i will say i did have a character my favorite character in skyrim was a thief i did all the thief skilled stuff i never even got a shout like that's how into that the thief skill that was i figured out where the thief skill was from the internet and i just beelined it the minute i got out of the tutorial mission i didn't even kill the first dragon fuck it which interesting <laughs> point interesting point about skyrim if you don't want to fight the dragons like if you don't want them randomly showing up and wrecking your city don't fight the first dragon because until you fight the first dragon and become the dragon board the dragons don't show up you can do the entire game other than the main story without any dragons just just want to let you know that huh. Uh, yeah, it's, it's true. It's, it's an actual cheat. It's an actual hack. Uh, so you, uh, uh, so I, I went there. I did the Thieves Guild. And I mean all the Thieves Guild missions. Not just the normal Thieves Guild missions. Like I built up the Thieves Guild. I actually made the Thieves Guild back into something big. Then I did the extra end game Thieves Guild stuff. Did everything I could do with the Thieves Guild. Uh, so then I decided to do some of the Assassin stuff. I did it. It wasn't really my bag. But I decided to just like start trying to get as much bounty as I could to try and get an achievement. Biggest mistake of my life. I can never play that character again. I am literally, I have a, I have 
a $2,000 bounty on my head in every hold. So if I go to any city, the guard just attack me. I can't do anything else. Like, there's no way to pay it off. There's no way to stop Aww. it. Like, that character's just, like, locked into, like, obscurity. Can't do anything. So I ended up... It's one of the reasons I started making new characters, because I, I just couldn't play that character anymore. <laughs> Time to get your fix. It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. It's not great. Horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Gaming Podcast. Hello, my name is Zachariah with Old Man Gaming, and while it may look like it, I am not alone today. With me is Neil, aka a tiny wizard. Now you're not seeing Neil because Neil's internet is having issues. So he's connecting to us through phone, which means that we are going to have a relatively short episode again. I'm sorry, guys. I know it's been short for the last couple of weeks. Life has controlled it. We will get back on track uh, soon. I'm, uh, I'm coming I'm coming at you live from out in the field. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. He's outside Capcom <laughs> I'm a field right reporter now. now. We sent him there for no reason. Uh, yeah, uh, so you guys decided for whatever reason to tune into another horrible gaming podcast. And before we get into our show today, which is basically just going to be fan traction and odds and ends, uh, just because of con connectivity issues, we don't want to keep this going too long. But uh, uh, yeah, we got to thank a couple people. Behind my ugly head uh, is a picture. A custom picture designed by Mr. Mark Bell. We thank him for that. And of course, the theme song for this show and all shows here at Old Man Gaming are supplied by the man who makes the music, my brother, Nick Van Sliders. We thank him for that. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right. So that brings us to first segment, most important segment. That is Fan Tur. Reaction. That's where we, the co-hosts, talk to you guys, the fans. We read your comments anywhere. We get them. We respond to you. We talk to you. All that fun stuff. So, uh, right off the bat, uh, Asylum 66. It's weird to eat dinner with your significant under? Question mark. Um, and this is covered in another post. I want to say right now that the what i was specific because when he posted this i was like what is he talking about then everybody said something and then i was like what are they all talking about i went back and listened to it uh what i i forgot a very key sentence when he gave his excuse for eating with his significant other it was at 10 30 at night uh that was the weird part not necessarily that uh that he was eating with his significant other that it was it was it was 10:30 p.m. Uh, that was the weird part. Asylum at the time of the uh, well, not excuse. I'm sure you were eating dinner with your wife. I'm not saying you weren't. I was trying to make a joke, but uh, that was the weird part. Everybody, not the not the fact that they were eating with the significant other. Uh, just wanna just wanna clear that up real quick. Um, so moving on, uh, backdraft, the boots, woo! <laughs> so, so he's the boots, he's okay with being the boots, that's good. Uh, and then Melissa apparently didn't think it was weird that I said it. She actually replied and said, I thought we were in the minority by eating dinner together. I'm glad to be wrong on that. Like I said, I actually didn't even mean it that way, but it is what it is. Uh, then uh, we have a little combo. Uh, between Will, Phil, and Will. Uh, William Ho and hi! Oh boy, poor Neil. He should be fine. I survived it, so will he, uh, so he will too. Still, I hope he recovers soon. As you can hear, with the exception of Neil being in a field right now, he is doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, cannot get rid of the cough. I, I just can't get rid of the cough. It's driving uh, dude, me crazy. Dude, I got it. A year ago when it was real tough and I I that cough is not only that cough stuck with me forever but I have spoke repeatedly on this show about how I can no longer eat Raisin Cane's and certain foods taste way better to me than they ever did before 
So that shit alters your DNA. It just does. Uh, so oh, you know what? Uh, and it, it's funny you mentioned that too. Um, hmm. Because I did the Taco Bell test. Oh, yeah? I did the Taco Bell test. Did it taste and better? sure as shit with you. It, well, it tasted the same, but it, uh, like that was the only thing that I could really taste. Like, right. right. I started losing taste and smell. The only thing with Taco Bell that didn't come through for me still was Baja Blast for some reason. Just kind of tasted like yeah. pure lime juice. The sodas really taste funny. The Coke, re- like Coke lost all taste for me. And that was, like it tasted bad, which is weird because I am a 40-year addict of Coke. So it was very strange to <laughs> not get my uh, my uh, 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 comfort from that. But yeah, Taco Bell, I don't know what it is. I tell you, and, and I've said it repeatedly, like now post-COVID, like... I could eat Taco Bell every night, and I never could do that before. Like, I could eat it literally every night. I'm now on an app and gets points for it just because of it. And I always liked Taco Bell, but, like, eating Taco Bell would be like, I binge on the Taco Bell, then I don't want to see it for a week or two, you know? Now, I could, just, <laughs> I could literally eat it every night. Uh, so to continue, William Hohen, uh, 100% on monetization. Also, if your game is $60, it shouldn't have a bunch of microtransactions and battle passes in it. Some game uh, some game uh, is triple dipping. They have a box price, a mandatory subscription, and a cash shop. Drives me crazy. So, for my off topic this week, I've been playing Weird West. It's very good. You can solve the quests in so many different ways. It's de- it's definitely a lot of fun. Curious if any of you have played it. Uh, they, they, he really likes Melissa and John Wick. Melissa to John Wick. Find a puppy, find a woman, move on with your life. <laughs> Thanks for the show. Hashtag John Wick needs a woman and a puppy. I uh, love the hashtag game with Will. Uh, now just to continue that, uh, Philbilly330 jumped in and commented on his comment and said... Hey, Will, I have also played Weird West, and I did enjoy it. Only thing I wasn't completely crazy about was how the characters change in between the chapters and how you build them and start to love them, and it doesn't all come full circle till the end. And some interaction stuff in the towns got a little weird, but I will say I think it's my favorite new game of 2022. Uh, and then Will responded to that. Yeah, when I finished the fir- first act, I was sad to lose control of Jane. Don't know what that means because I haven't tried it. Uh, really enjoying the creativity of the game, though, about halfway in the Pigman part. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's all on Weird West. Um, I haven't tried it, Will. I don't think Neil has tried it either. Um, no. Yeah, I mean... I'm not, it looks cool. It really does look cool. I'm just not in a CRPG mood right now, but Phil Billy really is in a CRPG mood, so uh, I'm not surprised he tried it and played it. Um, as far as the microtransactions, uh, yeah. I mean, what'd you think about our conversation last week there, Neil? I, I think that, like, I've, I've said before, mm-hmm. I remember back when Halo 5 first started doing their microtransaction shit and I was I was like I, I knew it was the start of something bad. Right. Um that said, like with Halo Infinite, it's free to play on the multiplayer. You go ahead and load that up with microtransactions. Because like I get it. You gotta make money. You gotta make money somehow. I'm not you know an imbecile when it comes to that sort of stuff. I just hate the the double triple dipping like like you had mentioned that Dragon Ball Z game that is one single mode basically over and over and over again that's a full price game loaded with microtransactions like that I cannot get down with that um, uh, yeah like, I can see games that are maybe let's say uh, uh, was it that dodgeball game or something like that? that yeah, was yeah, like a thirty dollar game that had microtransactions. Knockout. I think that's the furthest you can push that. Yeah, but knockout yeah, went I free to play as can... soon as it traded, changed publishers. It went free to play. Yeah, I and, think, and, and that's the thing is, I, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, the thing finish. Is like, once you're at at that free to play point, like 
if the game had never had microtransactions, it was a $60 game, you know, whatever. Right. And then they decide, okay, well, we're going to make it go free to play. Go ahead, my dude. Load it up with all the microtransactions you want because you're not going to make money otherwise. Now, yeah. uh, when Sorry. you start throwing ads and stuff in, it gets a little murky. Like, Street Fighter Five got kind of in some trouble for that because they would just slap, like, Capcom Pro Tour stuff all over characters and arenas right. Right. and stuff like that for advertising for that. Like, that gets a little skeezy, too. Yeah. I think... Uh, so, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, I think that... Um, you know, I was really thinking about it from last week. I, I still hold strong that, at least for me, I'm not willing to pay $60 for a game that is a multiplayer mode. And I'm not saying a multiplayer player mode is bad. Some of my favorite games are just, like, one-note multiplayer games. Uh, that being said, I'm not going to drop $60 for that. Uh, microtransactions or not. Uh, other than that, I do want to say I think I think it's 100% okay. I mean, <laughs> when you launch a, a game that's obviously has got a huge tail, like a games as service game or something that's going to go for a long period of time, um, and you launch it at $60, uh, there has to be an expectation that at some point you're going to need to start making money again on it uh, if you're going to have that long tail. You have to keep paying people, you know what I mean, uh, to continue to work on the game, especially on games of service. Games of service are constant things that need constant service and work by people that money doesn't fall out of the sky. That being said, I am completely in agreement with you. When you decide, okay, so like... If you wanted to say it's sixty dollars right now, then okay, don't put any microtransactions or battle passes or anything in it. And then after two years, if you're like, we're gonna continue this tale, switch it to free to play, like Destiny Two. I, I, you know, Destiny Two is not my favorite game, and I'm sure they've done some terrible things. But at the same time, I think a lot of what they did as a model is a good thing to follow in that in that kind of space. You know, Destiny Two launched at sixty dollars. It was a games of service. There wasn't, I don't think there was any microtransactions in it on launch. I know there started to be some uh, cons uh, some cosmetic stuff towards the end of their not free-to-play status. But they switched to free-to-play status. And now they have a battle pass and a, and a cosmetics sales marketplace and microtransactions. Fine. If you're going to put those microtransactions in, make it free-to-play. And if you're not make us pay $60. Like, I get it either way, but just don't have your cake and eat it too. So I'm kind of completely in agreement with you on that, you know? Um, yeah, I... I go ahead. I, I was just going to add to, like, I almost think to some degree <laughs> that the idea of a battle pass is starting to get a little crazy, but, like, the battle passes, they've, they've started to kind of turn that around because it used to be you pay 10 or $15, and that was almost like, it almost trapped you mm -hmm. into the game. Yep. Now again, if it's a free to play game, uh, that that is what it is. But you know, if you have a $60 game that just has like, well, you can unlock, you know, this, that, and the other with play, but oh, well, you buy this, this battle pass, you can unlock all this other stuff. But oh, by the way, you only have about two months to do it. Oh, you yeah. have a life? Well, you should have thought about that before you gave us your money. Because if you don't finish it by the time it's over, you know, your money's gone and you don't get anything. Like, well, they, and they there's started to turn around with a lot of that. They revised the model because it was just so... Uh, it depends on the game, too. Weird, I, like, I think crappy. that, yeah, there, right. are, there are battle passes where it's like, okay... Do I have to get through 20 levels Twenty levels of Battle Pass experience in four months? Okay, that's probably doable if I'm into it, and, I'm, and it's something I just started getting into, you know? Uh, do I have to get through 104 levels in four months? Because at that point, you're making me pay for something I can't possibly accomplish. Um, one of my favorite games is Naraka Blade Point. Uh, and Naraka Blade Point is a 
torrent on all of these things. They have a $40 price tag attached to them. They have battle passes and microtransactions out the absolute butthole. Just everywhere. Their battle pass has 104 levels. 104 oh my God. levels of experience. And they are not easy to get, get through. Just saying that right now. Uh, so I, I think that there's that is predatory. Uh, I don't like when a battle pass yeah. and and when I said last week I kind of like the battle pass model. I like it as as opposed to loot boxes. You know, I I like it oh, as yeah, opposed 100%. to like I, I like I like at least being able at least at the very least they're showing us how much we have to earn, how much and what we can get from earning on either level. You know what I mean? Like instead of just like. You're just constantly grinding for boxes and have no idea what you're going to get and where you're going to get it. I tend to like that a little bit more than some of the other more microtransaction-y microtransactions. Um, that being said, you, you can still make a battle mean. pass very predatory, you know? I mean, Marvel's yeah. Avengers yeah, well, was really bad with that. Yeah. They had a $40 yeah. battle pass, and their battle pass included a battle pass that was separate to each character. You literally had to grind out every character to even accomplish all your battle pass. There was just no fucking way you could have ever done it. Uh, and that was that was very frustrating, you know? And they had, if I remember correctly, they had that like arbitrary timer, too, to where it's like... If you could get through all of the levels within a certain period of time, like you would get your money back or, or some mm -hmm. shit like that. Some weirdness, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like... yeah, it was it was very strange. It was very strange, but that was a backpedal in the beginning, and uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I yeah. I think Melissa had some really good thoughts on it. I'm glad that was the topic that I had her for because she could really contribute financially to it i think um but yeah i think that like at the end of the day there has to be a discussion about what should be free to play what should be money and if you're free to play at, or your full price you need to pick one or the other which model you're going with instead of trying to like triple dip and i, I think a lot of it is pressure from bigger triple a studios because you look at you look at destiny 2 Destiny 2 went free to play as soon as they were out from under Activision. Like, I don't know if you remember yeah, that. That's but the minute true. they went back to being independent, yeah. they were free to play. Knockout City, that's another one. It was a $40 price tag with a bunch of microtransactions in it. The minute it switched, I think it switched to Epic or something like that, the minute it did, free to play. Uh, Fall Guys 2, I don't know what the situation was with Fall Guys with the whole switch to epic or whatever but they just went free to play uh and it was right after they switched uh from like one specific publisher so like i think a lot of it too is the triple a publishers being very greedy you know which is nothing new but right <laughs> yeah new <clears throat> flash corporation greedy <laughs> yeah yeah exactly uh so now we have kayla who continues to prove she hates me um, <laughs> since Neil gave me the gift of COVID, I'm actually home and remembered to comment this week. We always love your comments, my jests aside, Kayla. Although we do not like the fact that you had to get COVID, uh, like the, the that is very bittersweet as a sentence. Uh, Neil and I eat was, dinner. She was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> I I believe it. It's not fun. Neil and I get uh, Neil and I eat dinner together every single night and have since we live together. Which I get that again. It's a big mix up. I said I said half a sentence, but I thought I had said the full sentence, and it's just a side effect of being Zach. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I hate microtransactions, especially when your card information or bank account info is connected to the uh, to the device the game is on. When I worked at GameStop, uh, we got countless parents who came in to, f to us furious about transactions their child made without their knowledge. That is something 100% true. She has more comment, but I, 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 I want to just address this right away. That is something that is 100% true about microtransactions that I do not like, and that is they are made so...
so easy and so streamlined to grab people who do not know what they are doing. And that is something that's very predatory and very terrible. It's so easy. My kid almost bought a bunch of shit on my phone the other day. She was one tap away from oh. buying a bunch of shit on a mobile game. Uh, <laughs> and, like, it's, it's, that's how streamlined it is. My six-year-old just, like, saw a shiny thing and clicked some buttons and then all of a sudden was almost purchasing things via my, my credit card account. That kind of stuff... They, like, streamline it. They link it right up to your credit card the minute you get the game. You know what I mean? It's very, very, yeah. very obnoxious, and it's very predatory, and that is something that I feel like really needs to be looked at and possibly course-corrected in the gaming industry. Like, maybe put some sort of control on this so that it doesn't look like you're just trying to take advantage of children or gambling addicts, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think it was with FIFA, actually. Uh, there was a story that had come out that, like, the as all these other stories do, you know, kid spends, like, $7,000 on their parents' account trying to get this specific soccer player, and the parent reaches out to uh, EA, and uh, their response was, like, here's the link to to like the terms and conditions for microtransactions and terms of service and everything yep. like that. And it was just like an article of how to prevent it in the future. Right. Because they know. They know what they're mm -hmm. doing. They're not going to give you that money back. Nope. They know exactly what they're doing. This is this is their game. Like I would love to see some sales figures on how much money they make off dumb kids uh, who aren't necessarily dumb, who just don't know what they're doing. You know. Um, so to continue, <laughs> Kayla then goes, "I'm with Melissa on the communist statement, communism statement. If Steam made communism, would you also like communism, Zach? Okay." I'm going to make a comparison that's probably going to get me canceled, but let's do it. Kayla, <laughs> communism is great on paper. It really is. It looks amazing. The people who created it, let's, let's, just, let's just, the people who created it and used it, Stalin, Lenin, they, they didn't do so good with it. It, it was kind of like EA producing communism. That's what it was like. If Steam produced communism, I'd give it a try. I'd download that demo. 100%. <laughs> Might not pay $60 out of the gate, but sure, Valve has a good track record. I'll give it a try. <laughs> uh, then she continues. Bro, did, you, did you try the demo for communism <laughs> right? America? Oh, my God. I got to say, I was not sure about communism, but Valve... Knocked it out of the park, man. <laughs> Five star. Definitely beats what we got going on right now. Uh, okay, so that's as political as we're going to get. <laughs> God, come uh, then she said, so sorry we couldn't film podcasts for y'all y'all this week. I was down, but lit Neil was literally couldn't speak above a whisper. I love Melissa episodes, though. Hey, don't apologize, Kayla. I, I appreciate it. I was not having a great day, and I, <laughs> I wanted a day off. It's, it just fell on the wrong time, and I had actually seen <laughs> Neil say something about that and then forgotten about it later in the week. So when he responded, I was like, oh, shit, that's right. Uh, so it's, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. You guys were sick. It's no big deal. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. As, as, as harsh as it looks sometimes, I love the Melissa episodes too. That woman is so much fun to have a conversation with. She's snarky as hell and i love it and it just it's just constant it's like a constant chess match with conversation it's wonderful i'm glad you enjoyed it um so continuing uh backdraft oh and i forgot to mention i'm looking forward to the sons of the forest love the first one can't wait for this one. I gotta be. I gotta be honest. I did not see this comment until just now. I'm gonna have to look up Sons of the Forest because usually I know all games. At least oh, I'm aware of them, but I'm not aware of Sons of the Forest, so I'm gonna have to look that up. And then, uh, uh, have you heard anything about Sons of the Forest? 
I had never even heard of it yeah. until just now. I usually I usually know more of the not no offense to you, I usually know more of the like obscure references, you know. Yeah. And that one does not ring true to me for whatever reason. Then Backdraft says, Ip man greater than Rocky. Okay. I I I don't know if I could speak on this. It Man is awesome. I would definitely compare it to Rocky on a lot of levels. I don't know that I would say it's better than Rocky. I think the character-driven stuff in Rocky, the emotional family stuff, the love story in Rocky, uh, Rocky as a character, a little bit better done in the movie than Ip Man. Plus, Rocky has strife. Ip Man has strife, but it's all social strife. He has no physical strife in the first Ip Man. Uh, and I, I'm saying this right now. Both are fantastic films, five out of five. If you're asking me, though, which one edges each other out, I'm actually probably going to say Rocky on this one. Sorry, Backdraft. Sorry to disagree, but tis just an opinion, sir. All right. Uh, so that is, uh, and Neil can't comment on this because I'm sure he's seen neither. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which just enrages me. Just enrages no, no, me. No, 100% have. 100% have not seen Rocky or uh, yeah, I thought that IP man. I, I know it exists and <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, get your shit together. That's all I'm saying to you. That's all I'm saying. Get your film shit together. Uh, all right. Hey, you know what? Honestly, I don't know that I necessarily hate that Neil hasn't seen it, if I'm being honest, because if he saw it and hated it, it would be a whole nother bag of worms that I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to get into. <laughs> All right, so guys, like I said, you can hear the connection issues are real. Uh, that is fan interaction. Unless Neil, you got anything to add to it? Uh, no, not really. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna jump to odds and ends. I have four. Uh, they are things that we could uh, we could talk about for a small period. We'll probably elongate them, but then we're going to wrap it up. We have a great talking point for next week when we come back to a full show, to full show scheduling next week. Uh, but again, his connection issues is there. It, it just is the way it is. Uh, so yeah, uh, we will be right back after this with odds and ends. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, so that brings us to odds and ends. Smaller segments, uh, smaller stories we want to tell you guys about don't necessarily deserve a talking point. Uh, only reason one of these isn't getting a talking point this week is because, as you can see, uh, Neil is talking to us from a highway. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, do you want me to start? I've got four. Do you have any? I know you've been down with COVID. No, I, I only had the one, and honestly, at this point, like, the one that I had is, like, three weeks old, basically. What's the so one? Well, like I'll say it. You anymore. might as well say it. We can talk about it, at least. All right. Well, let me uh, let me just go ahead and uh, pull that up here on my phone. I thought you weren't going to say it. You don't even remember what it was. Uh, no, I, uh, I wrote it down here. I, like, I always put them in my notes, mm. and I just had the one, and I, that was all the further I got. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Ubisoft is apparently in kind of a really bad place, um, mm. <laughs> after canceling four games yeah. that were already in development. Yeah, I have heard uh, about It's this. rumored that Roller Champions is next to be canceled after only three seasons. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> this wasn't on my list, but I'm glad you brought this up because uh, that did kind of come up in the dead zone when we had Melissa on. Um, yeah, Roller Champions, which is a game that looks really interesting to me. I've heard that there's some issues. I don't know what the issues are. I haven't played it, and I haven't gotten into it enough to know what people have a problem with this game, but I have heard that the people who do enjoy it have some problems with certain balancing or bug issues. I don't know what they are, but yeah, they might be canceling it. Ubisoft has canceled a ton of their fucking games, uh, including like one of their big Assassin's Creed things, which I actually talked about last week. Um, which really leaves a lot on the shoulders of Skull and Bones. 
It really does. Like, without Skull and Bones, like, did Ubisoft even put anything out this year other than that? Riders Republic was this year. It was very yeah, it was very was early this year. year. I'm pretty sure it was very early this year. I could be wrong. I could be wrong and old. I but, thought uh, it was. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. I I, I was gonna say uh, I think it was. I thought it originally was like November or something. Oh, you might be right. No, 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 because that was that was actually one of the ones that I predicted. Because uh, it was just like Watch Dogs Legion. Like, it was slated for early last year, then they delayed it. It actually released October 28th of last year, so you are right. Uh, that is still going, though. That just got a new season drop, if I recall correctly. That's still yeah. actually a thing. Um, well, yeah, but, yeah, I, mean, I, I think you're right. I don't think anything released this year. That, like... Far Cry 5 was late last year, too, right? Uh... Or was that early this year? Uh, Let's check it. Let's check I it. I feel like it was. I think it was early this year. I could be totally wrong. Oh, I mean, Far Cry Six, Far Cry Five was 2018. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, last year, uh, October seventh of last year. So yeah, Ubisoft has not released anything this year, uh, Jeez. whatsoever. Uh, so, other than Roller Champions, Roller Champions was the only thing that they've really released this year. Uh, and they've got, of course, Skull and Bones coming, uh, which puts, yeah, a lot on their shoulders. And that's not even, like, a mainstay developer in Ubisoft. That's Ubisoft Singapore. That's not even, like, <laughs> it's not even, like, Ubisoft Montreal oh, or yeah. Ubisoft proper. It's Ubisoft Singapore that that's carrying it. I will say Ubisoft does have some proven multiplayer stuff that's still going strong, such as For Honor, Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, they are still holding very strong as far as player base and uh, money to them, but I don't know that that's enough to carry a company like that, you know? No. No, absolutely not. It's not enough to carry a company. I mean, they there's been all these rumors about, oh, well, maybe they'll make another... Uh, Maybe they'll make another Splinter Cell, mm -hmm. which they've like him hot around on, and at some point there's going to be the. Um, well, the rumor was one of the ones knows. that they canceled was the Splinter Cell. The rumor was one of the ones they canceled. Oh, was I had the, missed was the that Splinter part. Cell. Yeah, it was supposedly a Splinter Cell game. Two unnamed games that nobody knows what they were, and then one other game that was like Project Something that was supposedly like a spin-off of Assassin's Creed Valhalla that was going to be a full mainstream Assassin's Creed that released this year. Like they, it was supposed to be originally a DLC, they spun it off into kind of its own game and then they were going to release it as a full Assassin's Creed this year and that's been canceled. So, yeah, so Ubisoft's in a lot of trouble. Ubisoft's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I would say so. I, I will, like, I've said it. I said it last year. I'm, I would be very surprised if Phil Spencer is not in a room with it, it. The only reason I believe that Phil Spencer is not in a room with with the Ubisoft people is because he's having his own FTC uh, struggles right now. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, which is is interesting. I've been following that on Hogue Law, but that's that would take us way too long. We would be talking about that for a very long time. So uh, I will say that, yeah, that would be the only thing that maybe is holding him back because if he gets Ubisoft, the, the FTC would definitely try and block them at that point. Uh, so I don't know... Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, especially like... They just tried to block this insane uh, a buyout that Facebook did, that Meta did of this like fitness app, because they think it would monopolize things, uh, antitrust. And while the lawsuit that they're filing is shitty, it uh, just the fact that they're trying to block that, it's like, oh, if you're blocking that, <laughs> uh, Xbox Activision might have some issues, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But Ubisoft definitely wants to be bought. Uh, the question is, who's going to step up and buy them at this point? Uh, and I think that uh, I think that Xbox is a good bet, even despite their FTC things. If it's not Xbox, 
I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon purchased them. That's an entry. I know. One. I am a little bit of an That's outsider. An one I hadn't considered. I. Yeah, I, I could see that because Amazon's trying to get their foot in the door with Luna and their own mm -hmm. sort of, uh, you know, publishing stuff. Uh, yeah. Going on here. I think that that would be a very interesting move that could uh, that could actually make Amazon be somewhat of a relative contender in the game. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, I think that it would be a really interesting uh, perspective for Amazon Gaming. Personally, if I'm looking at the companies right now, I don't think Sony has the capital to purchase Ubisoft. Uh, I don't. I, I've thought that for a while. I think so. Sony's a little bit in trouble just because of like sales values and stuff like that. So I don't think they're looking to purchase uh, something that big. Uh, Xbox is having so much struggles with Activision that's probably holding them back from buying another company. Who else has been? Who else has the capital? Who has been trying to bust into gaming forever, and that's that's Amazon. Amazon's been trying to do this shit forever. I would not be surprised if Amazon didn't step in and be like, "Hey, we'll give you, you know, some billion dollars to to make games, make your Ubisoft games for us," you know. So I don't know. I don't know. Interesting thoughts all the way around. Uh, but yeah, that's still a good odds and ends, man. Still a good odds and ends. What you talking about? Uh, I contribute. <laughs> well, you're here. You contributed. Um, all right. So, I did. <laughs> my first odds and ends. Uh, this is a fun one. Uh, speaking of Ubisoft, we're going to segue right off of it. Uh, it was announced. A new news story came out. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 just hired their lead writer. Yeah. That's right. Announced eight years ago, that game has just now hired a writer for the game. So anybody out there that thought there was any game behind that original announcement, you are now officially proven wrong. There is nothing worked on. There is a literal trailer that they cooked up with a cinematic trailer company, and that was what you saw. That is it. There is nothing else done on this game whatsoever that's that's insanity I mean this sort of stuff shouldn't surprise me at all shouldn't mm -hmm. surprise anybody mm -hmm. at this point like if you know anything about the gaming industry and everything that goes on like that should be the last thing that would surprise you but I, I still cannot fathom a company coming out and saying hey we're going to do a thing. We have no progress done on it. But when we do mo do something, we think it may look something like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like, that yeah. <laughs> I, I think that like what bothers me about this is I have been saying since we for at least the last year and a half uh, that these announced trailers they are not way they are not for games they are for investors so that the investors will think that would make a cool game and they give them money they are money builders for the companies for the games themselves so you're watching it thinking yay i'm finally getting the game i want and there's not even a game behind it this kind of proves that there was no game behind this they announced this game eight years ago and now we're just finding out that they just hired a lead writer that means that there's nothing there's nothing there there's not even assets at this point so like th the fact is is that they made that trailer specifically to generate capital for other games out of investments that's what they did uh and and, it, and that's a little shady as fuck and i don't know why they're not getting more shit for it you know i i i would be surprised I'm surprised somebody in some organization didn't go, okay, we're going to investigate whether there was actually a game or not. Because that's fraud. Like, you know? Like, so, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and it, if you remember, too, the, like, all the assets were being... Uh, 
farmed out by, you know, by other people. Yes. There was yeah, that yeah. whole thing that they had whenever they first announced it, like, hey, make some stuff for this game. Ooh. Maybe we'll pay you, maybe we won't, maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't. Who knows? Oh, Neil, man. Neil, you sound like a Tetris machine what? right now. <laughs> you got so digital for a second there. It's really bad. It's really bad. Let's. Uh, we're on podcast, but that's fine. We're. I'm just gonna really quickly try to recall you. Okay, just try to reestablish the connection. All I'm right? gonna put my phone up in the window. <laughs> you guys are are hearing me now. Uh, recall him. Oh no. Are you there? Yeah. Why did you say oh no? Uh, everything changed for a minute and it like all faded out like I disconnected. <laughs> well, I switched to voice only, so we were still on video, so maybe it was trying uh, to okay. pull a video file and that's why it was it was being messed up. Uh, so hopefully, yeah. hopefully you're okay for the rest of the chat. You do sound a little bit better now. Um, yeah, I got my phone propped up in a window. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so next one I got for you. Uh, this is kind of a big one, and I think this actually may kind of feed into your theory that Game Pass is going to raise its price at some point, which if I recall correctly, that was a prediction for the year, and right now you're not looking so good on that one. Um, but this might be in your favor. Uh, they have just launched a pilot program not available in this country, uh, Columbia and something else. Uh, and the, the pilot program is so that players can share one Game Pass account. So up to four players yeah. can share a Game Pass account. Now, I read it. It didn't say anything about a necessary price upgrade. Though I'm sure that they are paying something more for this. It's an insider's program, so they might be getting it for free now to test whether, you know, the server works or whatever. Uh, but right. I, I think this is a really interesting prospect. And honestly, if they were to do something like this, uh, I, I, I think it would almost warrant warrant a price increase. Uh, and I would be a little bit more for it if I could like share my Game Pass with like. I'm not gonna lie. My daughter is getting more and more into video game every day. Video games every day. She's only six, so she's not playing anything heavy or anything. But at some point, I assume she is going to be playing things that are a little bit bigger. I even with her, I even priced out what it would take to uh, to build her a PC that's a little bit weaker than mine, but a PC nonetheless, just for fun. Uh, and so, so with that in mind, I mean it's not within the next year, but it's pretty far off. But at some point, she's going to want to play games, and I would love to share Game Pass with her and then be able to play with her, you know? Uh, this this would be a feature that I would be interested in, and I'd probably be willing to pay a little bit more for it. And this might lead into how they kind of uh, explain a price increase, is by saying, okay, well, now you can share it with four people, but it's X dollars, you know? Yeah, or they might do something along the lines of... Well, like, for one one person on a Game Pass, it'll cost, like, this much. But it'll actually end up, like, you know, breaking down to be like, oh, well, it's, like, it's $12 each if it's two right. people. Like, let's just say, right. like, oh, we're going to say it's $25 a month if you have one person on there. But uh, if you end up, you know, having two people, it's $30 a month. Mm -hmm. So that way they can, like, nudge people towards, like, well, I'll split it with you, and it's $15 each, you right. know. Right, And kick, kick it further along like that. I Like I said, I'm not necessarily against this. Uh, I like the idea of them giving us more for the price increase instead of just blatantly increasing the price, you know, while I understand yeah. that probably the price will have to go up at some point in the future. I still don't think it's going to be this year. Uh, that being said, I would love it if when they do increase the price, they say, 
okay, we're increasing the price, but you can actually share it with four friends uh, if you want to. You know what I mean? Or even, or even yeah. when the price increases for the base model, you get to share it with one extra person. You know what I mean? Like that, that to me would make it a little bit more worth it, and would excite me because that would be that would be cool. That would mean that I could get a friend, go in halves on it, or. Like I said, I could save that thing for my daughter when she's old enough to play Games Pass. Uh, Game Pass. God, Asylum is laughing somewhere <laughs> maniacally right now. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I'm kind of for this service. I I want to see where it goes. I'm very cautiously optimistic about it. But uh, this kind of sounds cool to me, honestly. Yeah. All right. Uh, it has potential. <laughs> so I got a funny one now. Uh, and I'm sure you probably know about this because I know who you're married to. Um, there is a very specific bug in The Sims that is funny as hell. Basically, it, it is aging children uh, all the way to elder age in a matter of like minutes in the game. Uh, actually, I did not hear anything about that. You didn't hear anything about that? It might no. not be. It's only when you play. So I looked this up because it's interesting. Uh, and it was it was as of an IGN article. It's only when you play and you specifically label your character's lifespan as like long lifespan or short lifespan and not just play normal. Uh, so probably... I don't know if Kayla's just playing on normal, you know what I mean? But uh, uh, yeah. if, if you label the character long or short lifespan, uh, the kids in that game, uh, they can just like randomly age up in like an hour. They'll skip birthdays and just all of a sudden they'll be old people. <laughs> <laughs> which is real fucked up. And a lot of people were pissed off about it because there doesn't seem to be any way to uh, right the ship. So basically your children in the game just immediately get old and die <laughs> which is ter terrifying it's <laughs> like the real world <laughs> one day you find yourself aging hey i they're seeing my gray hair right now and i can i can assure you my daughter was a newborn yesterday and is now just <laughs> huge <laughs> Uh, okay, final odds and ends. And this is an interesting one. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it means for gaming as a whole. but well, So we'll have to see. But apparently, uh, two of the most capitalistic and predatory companies on the planet are joining forces to create a handheld gaming console. Tencent and Logitech are joining God. forces to create a handheld gaming console. I, I don't know what that's going to be, uh, but yeah, Tencent, if you're wondering who Tencent is, they're that little uh, they're that little icon that comes up before every fucking game you play because somehow they've got their hands in everything nowadays. Um, they're, they're like the biggest gaming company in the world. Barely anybody's ever heard of them. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then Logitech are the people who make those shitty dollar twenty, twenty dollar keyboards and mouses. Got one right here. Yeah, one right here. Wasn't willing to spend any more money on my PC, so just a Logitech one. Uh, nonetheless, they're they're usually. I mean, they work fine. I'm not saying they don't, but they're twenty dollars, and they usually got to replace them every so often. I think, though, that being said. I'm kind of nervous about what this hardware is going to look like. And also, I would assume that Logitech is the one behind the hardware uh, because they're a hardware company. What is Tencent bringing to the table of this arrangement? An operating system? An engine? Like, what are they doing? I, I don't understand how this works. Like, usually when you have, like, a company come out with a console it's usually an established company that has an established presence in that kind of space microsoft sony nintendo obviously valve just released theirs and they're a little bit different but at the same time they've been around for a very long time and had a long time to put together the funds to to bring out a console as well as the knowledge to do it right and I would actually say that the Steam Steam Deck's launch has been relatively successful, as successful as it could possibly be coming off of COVID uh, in a world where the Switch already exists. 
Um, that being said, what the fuck would this console look like? You know? I almost wonder if they're going to try to do a Steam Deck situation, but Tencent is planning on buying their way into a uh, storefront situation <laughs> like Epic did. Ooh. I, I am much more scared that this is going to be a facsimile of a phone, like a mobile like a mobile gaming platform, uh, which would be <laughs> real dumb. Real dumb. All the jank. Yeah. All the jank yeah. of all of the mobile games, but yeah. like no cell phone function. Right, right. We're putting all that processor together to allow you to play Candy Crush faster. Like that's what I'm very scared of. Uh, as far as this, but nonetheless, it's happening. So great, nobody's learning anything. <laughs> <laughs> such is the way, I suppose. Yeah, such is the way. All right, so that's it for odds and ends, man. You want to go to plugs, wrap this thing up? Sure. All right, we'll be right back. Horrible gaming podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the show and the shameless self-promotion that comes with it. Neil, would you like to promote anything this week? Uh, not really. You, uh, well, you do get to see me, actually see me, on uh, UHW. This is true. Playing, is true. Uh, playing Chad Rover. Uh, Chad will be back in action here soon, I do believe. We have yet to find out what the stipulation is going to be. I wonder what... Phil's gonna make. I think he's got to make it something crazy to like settle the score, like a cage match or some shit. Oh yes. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what he books it as. Uh, I'm kind of interested. Uh, yes, you can see Neil on UHW live play show. It posts on Saturdays on our Axiom Games YouTube channel, but it also posts here on Tuesdays. Uh, so you watch them wherever you want. It and, and do you know Neil what what you play to play that game? And what is that, Zach? What do you play? You play Upper Hand, an Axiom Wrestling System RPG. And ladies and gentlemen, at the beginning of this show, you definitely heard a very bad and very poorly scripted advertisement for that thing. Uh, that uh, we did four of those, so we're going to rotate through them, and they're going to be before all of my shit now. Just letting you know. Get used to that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, it is the first debut game for myself and Mark Bell's uh, tabletop RPG company, Axiom Games LLC. We are super proud of this. You can go to drivethroughgames.com and literally in the taskbar put in the words upper hand, You'll find our game. They're very cheap. It's ten dollars for a PDF, fifteen, uh, twelve dollars for a soft cover, fifteen dollars for the combo pack, and then you need a deck of cards per character, and those are four dollars a piece. Uh, special deck made specifically for the game, so you can get it for you and another person for under twenty dollars. So yeah, man, uh, please go purchase it, please. You know, Zach, I heard that game has actually got uh, is highly reviewed. It is highly reviewed by the one person that reviewed it, Wizards Respite, which you can actually, if you don't want to take my word for it, go to wizardsrespite.com. Uh, you will find a review of Upper Hand. It is his featured review right now. And, uh, yeah, he reviews the game start to finish. Very well-written review. Uh, we actually read it on our launch stream this last Saturday. It was wonderful. Brought a tear to my eye. So, yeah, if you don't want to take my word for it, go read that. I'm even quoting him in some of the advertisements we've done. So please, 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 if you're a tabletop RPG guy or a pro wrestling guy or both, this is the game for you. So go check it out. Go purchase it. I would, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and since this is the thing that most of the people on our channel listen to, I do want to just give a quick public service announcement. My streaming, my lunch streams are no longer on Wednesday as I am working again, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So they will be Tuesdays and they're still breakfast right now, but in about three weeks, they will go back to being lunch, uh, because Stella will go back to school <laughs> and then amateur hour, same time, same time. Check it out. 
Uh, I will also be playing Star Trek Axiom this Wednesday night. Uh, slowly trying to wrap up that game. You can check up. Uh, you can check in on the uh, the replay on Fridays here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and I think me and Neil uh, and maybe Kayla got to get together to do a stream soon, sometime this month, I think. I think. I think that's got to happen. Yes, now. absolutely. Yeah. Um, that, of course, would require internet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hopefully your problems will be resolved by then. And uh, yeah, my problems aren't resolved by the end of the day <laughs> Tuesday. I I have much larger problems. Hell to pay will come. Uh, and uh, and Phil and myself need to do Wilder Myth again because we really enjoy that. We don't do it enough, honestly. So, all right, everybody, that's it. As usual, you can contact us on Facebook at OmegaGamingDH, on Twitter at OmegaGaming9. You can join our Discord. Link's in the description below. You can influence us in all of our shows there. And uh, as long as you keep watching and listening, we'll keep making and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. The action that they do in it, like some of the action scenes, you're like, I have problems with this being a 40-year-old man who knows how the world works. I don't think this would happen. I don't think this... And it's like, they go off the rails with realism. And the games were pretty out there with the stunts. I know that. But, like, right. there's something about it happening on a screen when he's doing certain things. And you're like, this is crazy. This is crazy that we're watching this. And I don't know that I would have picked Tom Holland or Mark Wahlberg for those roles. I just, I just don't know that I would have picked them. Well, there, there's a lot of weirdness, too, with that, because, like, having played through all the games now, like, mm -hmm. the, this is supposed to be, like, when Drake is younger, but it seems like they're just going to redo his origin and make Sully be, like, you know, just, like, a younger version of himself. But if I remember correctly... They wanted Mark Wahlberg to be Nathan Drake originally. At one point, But it yeah. took him so long to make this goddamn movie. Mm -hmm. They were like, well, so much time has passed. You're actually too old now because we took too long and we're going to recast you. I don't, <laughs> I don't know that Mark Wahlberg... I, I don't hate Mark Wahlberg, but I don't know that he would have been a good Nathan Drake either. I think that... Uh, yeah, this is this is kind of like billed as a prequel to the first game, really. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, uh, most of the plot comes from the fourth one. I, and I didn't play the fourth one. Yeah. I just know that it comes from there. And I'm like, yeah, that's weird. Why, why, why do that? What are you going to do when you get to the fourth one? Uh, I'm very confused here. And they did change some of the origin stories and then there's other things that like like there was a couple of things that's like straight out of the game like oh okay like he's got a fucking journal that they found somewhere and that shit answers all their problems if they look at it upside down or whatever and that that's how all the games were and that happens in this but then there's like there's weird product placement at one point just like super weird product placement you know what? I'm going to spoil this one for you. There's a Papa okay. John's in it that is integral okay. to the plot of the movie. <laughs> like, like without this Papa John's, without this Papa John's pizza place, the movie doesn't happen. Like, that's... Oh, my God. <laughs> and that, I was like... I looked at Melissa, I was like, how much do you think they got for Papa John's? And she's like, all the money. All the money to make this. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then there's like a couple of things that like just doesn't happen in it that you're like, why didn't that happen? That's weird. Plus, for me, like I'm so, well, I, I'm getting into spoiler territory, but uh, there's certain characters that, that are like mainstays of the storyline which it kind of makes sense if they're doing a prequel here but they're mainstays so you kind of expect to see them in there somewhere and they're just not you know uh and that's weird that's really weird uh so i don't know i don't know. watch it and uh, i'll be interested to see what you say i didn't hate it i really didn't hate it i actually found it more entertaining than the tomb raider movie uh so there's that but that being yeah, said I, uh... I don't know if i it's definitely now a five out of five for me, that's for sure.